So I'd like to ask two people if they have questions to come up. But when you come up, say who you are. I'd love to know who you are, and I'm sure everybody else would like to know too. Do we have any questions from anyone for Natalie? Come on up. She takes the spot. Wow, nice. Come on up. Hey, everyone. Uh, What's so, your name? So my name is Adar. I'm a little bit sick, so please forgive me. <laughs> I'm originally from Israel. Um, I work for the investment bank, UBS, and now I'm trying to get into a business analyst investment banking position. So basically, um, the question I have for you is, first, what was your first startup? Yeah. I think we missed that. And then second, what was the tipping point for you? So when did you realize you have more than an idea and you took it to the next level from idea to an actual business? I said it was an, it was an accident because it really truly was. Um, it was a little company called Web Meridians um, and it was in Boulder, Colorado where I was in school at the time. And literally I got into a motorcycle accident um, when I went home for the holidays. <laughs> And my only form of transportation when I came back to Boulder was my motorcycle, and I couldn't ride it anymore. So being a scrappy entrepreneur from birth, I went to the local uh, car dealership, used car dealership. Um, it was 1996, so not everybody had a website, obviously. Um, this, this guy didn't. And so I had enough money to pay for half of a Jeep Cherokee that he had on the lot. And I was too proud to ask my family because um, they didn't know that my only form of transportation was a motorcycle, first of all. Um, so I, I basically pitched this guy a deal. I said, I got, I've got half of the Jeep in cash, and the other half I'll make you a website. And he said, sure. <laughs> um, and then he was happy, and he told his friend who owned a dealership down the street, and then the next one and the next one, and before you knew it, I had more than I could handle, so I asked my boyfriend at the time to help me. And then we had more than the two of us could handle, and then we brought on a third person, and you know, a couple years later, we had a viable business. It happened completely by accident. The next ones did not happen by accident, but I mean, that just goes to show that it doesn't take that much strategy sometimes <laughs> to get started. So when, when did you um, realize, okay, you're satisfied with your first startup, and now you're ready to move to your second startup, and then how did you find the second idea? So here's where we get into the dirty laundry. I didn't. <laughs> and I mean, I want to also give a, the story of, there's a woman who, when she was 18 years old, and she was between her freshman and sophomore year at Barnard, her name is Eva Sassoon, um, who I'm currently mentoring. And she started a company between, again, you know, she was 18 years old, and right now she's 20, and it's being sold. So we already have a Barnard student. Does she need a partner? Um, yeah, well, so... Her deal, though, is that she was actually thinking of maybe stepping down from the company. But then, just as she was ready to give up, somebody said, maybe an asset acquisition will work. So she's selling her company, but what she's doing is she's selling the intellectual property. And that's what happened to me. And it was a little bit gut-wrenching, because I actually wasn't necessarily ready to leave, but I lost my two partners. I was by myself. I did it for a year by myself, out of sheer stubbornness, because somebody told me I couldn't do it. Um, but I wasn't happy. And so somebody told me that if I broke up my company into little parts, that it would probably be more valuable. And, that, and you know, that's not the fairy tale, um, but it, it worked and it got me onto the next thing. And the next thing was me doing globalization, um, working for one of my clients, and that's what I've been doing for most of my career. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So do we have one more question? Anyone? This is the table of rock stars. Hi, everyone. My name is Moi3. Thanks for Hi. doing this. Um, I'm Can you from say India. your name again? Moi3. Moi3. I'm from India. I work in advertising. So the one thing you said that you didn't like was seeing those articles telling us what we do badly. Yeah. Um, and what women have stereotypically is empathy. Mm. So I wanted to see if how empathy played a role in your businesses before that guy went to the hospital and after that guy went to the hospital? Um, 
It played a role in that my staff was heavily female. Um, and it played a role in this very strange way because I was the alpha female in the, sorry, the alpha male in the organization. That's how I behaved. But oddly enough, my business partner is, uh, is what I, I call him my work husband. For 11 years, we went through many, many businesses together. And he was the, fe he was the sort of matriarch um, in the stereotypical way, right? I mean, which just goes to show, I suppose, that gender is what it is, right? It's something you perform. But he was empathetic. He was a wonderful listener. I was the bad cop. He was the good cop. I mean, it, it was a nice balance. And I actually learned a lot from him. And so I would say prior to my realization in 2003 that I really needed to shift, um, I really learned a lot from him more than anything. And I, that goes to show, I guess, why partners are so important. Um, and then after 2003, it was very much about me taking ownership and realizing, okay, I have to get my act together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that having a very diverse staff of people, you know, heavily female and male balanced, and then um, having people from all over the world. I had offices in 33 countries. That was another thing. Like, you learn, you're forced to be empathetic and a great listener when you have people from every country in the world. Um, so I was lucky in that sense. Some people think having people from all over the world just makes life complicated, but I think it makes us better. So. And I had a great office in Chennai and in Mumbai. I would absolutely love to live in India. In Chennai? Really? Oh, I love Chennai. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. You guys ready? So. I'm embarrassed. I had to ask yeah. Alia who Dusty Springfield was and the other one. Yeah, well. The author. You did. <laughs> Anybody here knows who Jackie Collins is? Yes. You see, it's not everyone. You really know who Jackie Collins is? Could you come over here? <laughs> Explain it. Could you, could, you, could you say in two words who Jackie Collins is? Uh, 10 or 15 All right, words. One, one sentence. Jackie Collins is a very popular author who probably doesn't write all that well, but keeps everybody enthralled with lots of sex. Did you say lots of sex? Okay. I have one thing to say about Jackie Collins. What's that? Uh, I, my first novel I read was Lucky. I don't know if you read Lucky. Yeah, yeah. And, and for an 18 years old girl growing up in a conservative community, I was so struck with this woman who would go up in a bar and pick up guys. Uh, and to me, that was a social norm that was so diverse and so reverted that I didn't understand, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Dusty Springfield is, is a woman who has made a huge difference in many of our lives uh, in, in terms of immigration, in terms of sexuality, in terms of uh, domestic violence and um, her play is happening right now. And we're giving away two tickets tonight as part of the Dusty Springfield Love. So without further ado, I'm going to announce the three winners tonight. And I think I need help. Could somebody come over here and help me? Could you come and help me? Your card isn't here? So that's okay. Are you going to look at your card? Well, I tell you what, you can, ring, you can read it out. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to pick the first winner. What is the first winner going to get? One gift bag, which includes the latest music CD by Sarah Brightman, Yoko Ono, Paloma Faith, Bridget Medler, Calvin Harris, Chris Mann, and Rufus Wainwright. Okay. Now, the prizes are on the table. See, this is what happens when you're a one-woman show. <laughs> So, the winner tonight is Alejandra Duke. Duke, Duke. 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 Colombia in I'm the gonna, house. I'm going to grab your prize. Alejandra Duque Cifuentes is the founder and director of Theater That Transcends. It's a, it's a yes, formal please, presentation. Please, please come over here. 
So this is the prize that you're going to give to the next person. See, I like to shake it up a little bit. So, the next winner for tonight of the Power Trip by Jackie Collins is Ambika. So, won that. So I think this is a Jackie Collins, Ambika. Ambika is a physical therapist at see, Deva Physical see how Therapy. I tricked you. I have the Dusty Springfield sealed somewhere in the back. So the winner of the two tickets for Dusty Springfield, which, by the way, I had the opportunity to look at, to see, the, see it about two days ago. It blew my mind. She's amazing, and the lead actress will be the next woman I interview on Wonder Women in Action. Woo! And the winner is... You can't win, can you? Nina? Not me. No. It's Jessica Berrios. It's Jessica here. So Jessica, I want to congratulate you. And I want you to come and talk to me in the next five minutes because I have a gift certificate for Dusty Springfield. And if you don't have a guest, you can invite me again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for a wonderful night. Please keep networking and get to know each other better. And thank you, my dear.